So welcome to the second lecture on power systems. So the um, topic of this lecture, I, I, I named it as a review of essential concepts, part, part one. All right. Uh, that's, that means that we have part one and, uh, and part two will come uh, in the following. Okay. Um, the learning objective of this lecture is that uh, we are going to try to answer most of the prevailing technical questions in power system. For example, uh, why do we use AC instead of DC? So AC is alternating current, everybody know. And why we use AC instead of DC? That the, the question like uh, why we use 50 hertz, why uh, three phases are used? Okay, so these are the key questions that may arise uh, when you, you, you learn uh, in electrical engineering. And uh, the, the, the second objective is that we, uh, I suppose that you have learned all this, uh, the, the number two and number three from your electric circuit class already, but if not, uh, you, why don't you learn it uh, uh, in this subject, right? Uh, the second top objective is to review analysis of balanced three-phase calculation. So the technique that we will be focusing so much in this course is called per-phase analysis. So the third uh, objective is that um, uh, this is very important. That's why I, I use the, the verbs to strengthen, right? Uh, this, uh, uh, the concept is uh, about the three-phase power calculation. Okay, that you may have uh, have heard already, right? The three-phase uh, balance system. You you have uh, three times V phase, I phase, blah blah blah. For example, why we use uh, the the factor three or root three? That will come uh, in this lecture. So I suppose that two and three are, have been uh, covered in detail in power in, in electric circuit subject. But if not, uh, I, I I'm trying my best to to go through in in this lecture. So the technical questions that we 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 try to answer to you in this lecture is that why we use AC not DC, right? Why we use sinusoidal? Uh, sinusoidal uh, it's it's the terms where you could uh, express the waveform in terms of sine or cosine function. Okay, when we talk about sine and sinusoid means that it is either can be sine or cosine function. Why we use sine and it's co function cosine. Right uh, to express alternative alternating voltage, uh, it can be alternating voltage or uh, alternating current. Okay, but why we why we use cosine? In, okay, why we use sixty hertz or fifty hertz? And the last question would be why we use three phase. Right, the first question is very uh, uh, probably is the is is the basic. We have to. Uh, Thinking back, uh, by, uh, looking at the history of uh, power system development, um, you may have heard that uh, the initial power system, the first power system that ever built in this in in the world, was uh, DC, and the father of um, the DC was Thomas Alva Edison, right? Uh, but uh, later on, okay, the why 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 did AC conquer DC? Okay, this is one of the question, uh, one of the answer to to this question. Okay, when we uh, when we uh, when we think about uh, application in power systems, we can say that uh, when we try to increase the uh, tr uh, distance of the transmission, meaning that we we are we are trying to transfer power through uh, a large distance to the long distance. For uh, for example, here uh, when we plot the the uh, the graph between cost and the transmission distance, uh, as you saw from the um, the the last lecture, that when we when we uh, talk about the vertically integrated structure, right? Vertically integrated structure means that the the uh, the G T and D belongs to the same entity, right? It, it's it's all under the same uh, umbrella of the same entity. One of the reasons for using this kind of structure is that we, we want to use economy of scale. Okay, We want to use the economy of scale because the more we produce, the cheaper the electricity. 
right? But once the the problem of uh, you know using the economy of scale is that we we have to use a large generator. Okay, the generation must be large, and typically the generation is uh, located in close to 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 the energy source. For example, if you use the hydroelectric, okay, if you use hydroelectric means that uh, the electricity generating from hydropower plant, uh, the energy source is water, right? So <coughs> the uh, source of the generation, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the location of generator is very far away. It's always deep in the jungle where the, uh, the load consumption or we call the load center, okay? Low center me uh, it's it's where most of the uh, the consumption is right <coughs> uh, the low center is always far away from 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 the generation because of the economy of scale you have to put uh, a big generation right uh, far away from the load that's why you need uh, a, a very long transmission line okay that's why you know large generation large generator is uh, generally used right in uh, in the old days in old days I would say because now the the technology has changed and you know the uh, smaller generator can be placed close to to the load right but nowadays we have the uh, the, the, the the technology called distributed generation distributed generation okay or DG okay the DG can be uh, placed right uh, close to the load the location can be can be close to the load okay load consumption now the the distance I mean the transmission is not is no longer a problem in in these days but we are taught we are trying to say why AC versus DC is, is important because if you Usually, the old day, right? You need a high, uh, long transmission. You can see that uh, uh, the cost of the uh, uh, transmission or the cost of the transmitting power uh, up to a certain uh, point, right? The, the the DC is is more expensive than the than the AC, right? But generally, you can see that this the, the break even of of that uh, point that the, the AC is cheaper than DC is less than um, uh, about a thousand kilometer but most of the system right we don't need such a extra long uh, uh, overhead line okay we don't need uh, such to transfer to, to the long very long distance that's why the cost of uh, AC transmission is cheaper uh, w when the, the distance is less than 1000 kilometer Okay. This is the this is the uh, I mean uh, the reason why we use AC. Okay. Well, for for the DC, we normally we generally use the uh, uh, the the DC. Okay. For example, in the bullet here, you see that the long submarine crossing. Uh, for example, the Baltic cable between Scandinavian country and Germany, 600 kilometer, connected between Norway and the Netherlands. So in that case, uh, I mean, most of the time, we, people have used um, the, the direct current instead of, uh, uh, of the alternating current. Okay, and the asynchronous interconnection. This is uh, another reason why we use the DC. So th these two bullets explain why DC should be used. Uh, in which circumstances DC should be should be used? For, the, for example, uh, I mean, the, for the first reason is the submarine crossing. Okay, and the the the, the next the 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 following uh, reason is the asynchronous. Asynchronous means that it is uh, with the interconnection with different frequency okay okay we have a si one system with 50 hertz and you want to connect with 60 hertz system so these two system cannot be uh, uh, connected uh, directly right you need uh, um, um, uh, uh, HBDC most of the time like uh, in Thailand uh, in inter interconnection between Thailand and Malaysia we also used uh, um, HVDC high voltage direct current so you will you may have seen you know the term HVDC standing from high voltage 
direct current. Okay, not most of the time we we, we use uh, HVDC for these two reasons. So when we analyze the power system, we have the characteristics called uh, linear time invariant system. So the, uh, you may have learned this from your signal and system class, but uh, to, to just wrap up with this uh, LTI characteristic is that the term LTI is um, um, used, right? Uh, the, uh, most of the time in electrical engineering, invariant means that it, is, it doesn't uh, vary with time okay and this is the system is linear so the system uh, I mean the function that describes the the system doesn't change with time and the system itself is linear so you can see that uh, if if uh, LTI characteristic or power system pertains you put the sinusoidal as an input to the power system right and the, uh, the system is linear Okay, meaning that you put sinusoid, the output for, of this is sinusoid as well, because um, you know if it is if it is linear, the form of the waveform doesn't change. Okay, if it is a linear function, you can see that y, uh, uh, in this case y is equal to k x. This is linear function with the independent variable of x and dependent variable of y so if k is greater than 1 then it means that uh, the um, uh, the magnitude of y increased but if k is less than 1 the magnitude is decreased right but if you put uh, x for a certain things so that, that the I mean if you put a waveform of x right and the, to the system with as a linear so you get the same waveform with a different magnitude and uh, this is called the, the the linear function and the function itself doesn't I mean the the transfer uh, function of the of the system itself that doesn't, doesn't change with time that's why we call uh, time invariant right uh, the, the, the things that the two things that change by LTI as an output is that the one is the magnitude Okay. the magnitude can can uh, can be changed if if the transfer function uh, magnifies the, the the magnitude of inputs or it can be uh, reduced as and decrease the magnitude of the uh, of the input right so the two things can change these are the changes of LTI okay the magnitude can change the other thing is the phase angle can change Okay. For example, you can see from here that the the output, right? In this case, you you have to get the reference. You see, uh, you, you learned it from circuit already that if you put the reference at this position, you see that you see the uh, uh, the output here. It is an output. Okay. So the output itself it just leads the input. Okay. This is the lead the input. So you can see that the out leads the in out lead in or you can say that in lags out okay where I put the uh, the dot as an out and uh, the, the the dark line is an input okay now you see you you can describe this as a vector diagram like this you can you see uh, the um, uh, you can see that the, the if you normally when we when we look at the uh, uh, phase diagram like this, you put it as at the at the reference, uh, okay? The reference here at the zero degree, you you stand it here, and you see this first. You see the dot first, and the dot just come later. So you see that this in it just lag the out, okay? In lags the out. So this is the characteristics that you 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 might have learned you should have learned it uh, properly already before coming to this class right so the things that you learn from the circuit uh, this is the concept no, this is a, this is not a new concept but you learned it from from ac analysis in circuit already is that uh, we talk about the effectiveness value okay the effectiveness value uh, or uh, if it is a circuit we we call it a uh, root mean square value rms right root mean square well, what's the reason why we why we have to take the effectiveness value is that you know when we uh, have the uh, uh, ac signal okay 
By the way, uh, what, what, what do we mean by AC? Let me recap this for you a little bit. AC means alternating currents. It means that the, the waveform just change direction. Okay, just change direction with time. Okay. When the time goes, when the time goes, uh, the direction of the signal just change. You can see from here, the V uh, for this example, right? The V just changed the direction from positive to negative. This is positive direction and this is negative direction over time evolution. Okay, when the time goes by, the direction change. This is what we call alternating current. So the alternating current could be in any form, right? As long as you change the sign of the vector, this is the this is the alternating curve, or this is an AC signal. Okay. If you, for example, if you you put the sinusoidal to to uh, to the resistor, we have the um, uh, sinusoidal voltage right applying to the to the resistor like this. You, everybody knows that the resistance resistor is a linear element, right? This is the linear element, circuit element. You put the sinusoid as an input. That means that if it is a linear time invariant, time invariant. This is an LTI system, okay? Because the uh, the transfer, right? I, as the concept that I suggested already, that the function that maps between input and output doesn't change with time. So let's think about the, uh, what are the, uh, I mean, the function that used to describe this kind of circuit, okay? Uh, that was in Ohm's law, if you remember, this is V is equal to I times, uh, this is an Ohm's law. But in this case, uh, since you put the, the time function, so we normally write uh, Vt with the small letter and the function of time is equal to, uh, I T times R, right? Now you see that um, it is L T I because the, the equation that describes the inputs and output here it's a linear function because the variable there is no multiplication of the variable or there is no um, a multiplication or division of the variable, right? That that is a characteristic of linear equation. And the equation itself is uh, time invariant because uh, the R doesn't change with time. Okay, the R doesn't change with time. Okay, but most of the time, you see that uh, when we try to analyze this circuit, okay, we what we are talking about, uh, we want to know the the, the power that is associated with the uh, the circuit, the power consumed. Or, uh, I, I mean, ultimately, we want to see the energy consumption of the load. For example, this is the load, right? Uh, as a power engineer, you are interested to, to see how much the, uh, the load consume the power or the source generate the power, okay? So most of the time, we are dealing with power, okay? So the power of uh, the AC circuit, since we have the time function as an voltage and current, we have both V and I in, in, as a time functions, okay? The power itself is also time function. The time function of power is called instantaneous power. Instantaneous power we normally write in terms of p, small p, as a function of t. You could compute this by v square divided by t. Though you see this is the time function, uh, square of the time function divided by r, or the square of the current function uh, times r. Okay, and but in general it is the p t. Okay, P, pa, instantaneous power is the, by definition, is the multiplication between uh, V and I as a time function. Okay, this is by definition. This is equal by definition. So, those who just uh, learned for, with me for the first time, uh, this is the, uh, the notation of equal by definition. Okay, we define it to be equal, right? So if we uh, talk about the, uh, the case of uh, the circuit, right? you can have uh, the, the, the R circuit, you can have like this, okay? Now you see multiplication of the two sinusoid, the two sinusoid, definitely you, you get the sinusoid, right? You get sine or cosine function, okay? 
but once uh, when we in, in I mean when when we are in real life, right? In real life, you 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 are not interested in power asset time function. Okay, uh, you can see that uh, the power engineer when you when you go to the to the field or if during the you know the the, the, the study, you go to the lab, right? The lab supervisor would give you a power meter, and you can see that you just read um, the power consumption of the of uh, of one uh, 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 light bulb, for example, right? You you read it five watt, ten watts, for example. You never see the waveforms of of power, so that fixed value, okay, is an average value, okay. Uh, but in real life, the measurement that you see is an average value, right? So the average is, is of interest of people, okay? So you, you must have some, you know, certain uh, equivalence between the, the, the instantaneous power and average power, okay? So that, that equivalency is, is achieved by defining the so-called effective, uh, effectiveness value. Okay, that effectiveness value is that we're trying to you know find the equivalence of v here, which is uh, an average value. Okay, and the r is the same. You want to we want to see how much of the av average v that would produce the same results as uh, uh, the instantaneous value, right? So you can see that uh, we want to get some sort of equivalency between these two, 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 two circuits. Okay. Now we the reason is that we're trying to find the v square t as a function, right? V square t. This is the sinusoidal function divided by r, and we have we, we want to get this equivalence, that this average v that would produce. The same, uh, I mean, uh, power as uh, the instantaneous power, right? So now let's observe this one. Okay, uh, you you can see that the this is a time function. This is a fixed value. Okay, this is a fixed value. This is the if you want to see this is like a AC circuit. This is like a DC circuit. The re uh, the things I mean, some of the lecturers would would say that you know uh, the average value. V average would be uh, trying to find the DC equivalency, right? The equivalence uh, value that would give the same power as the AC um, uh, 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 power, right? So now you see, how, how would you achieve this one? This is not possible, you can see, because, uh, okay, the R is the same, you can cancel the R, right? Uh, this is the time function, square of the time function, right? The V average is a constant. How on earth that you would get, you know, the square of the time function to be the same as, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, uh, fixed value? Okay, that is possible because you know the V here is uh, what we call periodic function, right? You want to get the uh, the average of the periodic function. Periodic function. Let us, uh, you know. Re revise, uh, re review the, the, the term periodic function, right? Periodic is a function that is just for example like this, right? There is a recurrent pattern in every uh, fixed interval. For example, you have the sinusoid like this. So the sinusoid like this, the, the period of the sinusoid is 2 pi, right? So it's recurrent, it just happened uh, constantly at every two pi, so the four, the uh, the pattern is the same. Okay, if I want to get the average of this, it's very easy, right? But everybody knows that the, the average of uh, the sinusoid is is zero, right? Because the uh, the area underneath the curve up up here, the uh, the positive area, is just equal to the negative area. So in this case, uh, for the sinusoid. Uh, sinusoidal waveform, right? The average, the time, the, the periodic average is zero. Okay, but the way we find the average is 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 relatively easy because you know, you just take the square of this guy. Okay, uh, you take the square of this, you would get uh, uh, something like this one, and the positive becomes becomes what? Become 
in this case, and this is the maximum for sinusoid, maximum is 1. So you see, uh, you, you, you find the value, it is the same like this, and the, the, I mean, the, the, lo the, the lower part here would be something like this, right? So once we, we, we have the square of this, right? We have the square of this, and you find, trying to find the sum of this, right? When we say the term average, average, you, you must know that, you know, for example, uh, the average of three numbers like this, one, two, and three, the average of this, everybody laugh at me, you know, why, what's are the, what is the average of this? So you know that the average of this is the sum of these three numbers divided by, right, the number of figures here, for example, here 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6 divided by 3. So the average is 2, right? Okay. So the, we, we, we use the same uh, ideology of uh, this average. So we take the square root uh, for the periodic function. We take the um, um, square to the, the original voltage, right? We take the, the square of the original uh, voltage waveform. Then this is the v square, right? And we get we must get the sum, okay? The sum of the v square, so you integrate, right? So now you take the integral uh, from the whole period from zero to t for the whole period of this, right? Uh, this is just like we have three numbers: one, two, three. This this is a discrete form, right? This is a continuous form, okay? The sum divided by, when we uh, sum of this, we, we divided by the number of 1, 2, 3, we have 3 numbers, right? For, for this case, you sum uh, over the period, so you, multi you divide this by the period, okay? This is to find the average, okay? Once we have this, right, you see that it's not true, it's not correct, right, F to find this, uh, the average like this, because the average of this is, 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 is the sum of the square, right, the average, this is the average, sum, uh, average of the sum of the square, sorry, uh, this is the average of the square value, right, but uh, we want to find the average of the V, so you take the square root of this, okay, that's why in this case, okay, you get the V average okay you get the average value okay that's why this is called the concept this is not not nothing new okay uh, that's why we call this is a root mean square the root mean square would explain to you the process the process of determining the average value okay this is a process of determining the av average value you can see that root this is a square root mean which is the sum divided by an, the, 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 I mean the number right root means a square so root are the IMS is just the procedure uh, is the name that explain the procedure of determining the average value of the periodic function okay so in, in order to find the um, uh, uh, um, RMS of the sinusoid, okay? Let's take the sinusoid of Vm sine omega t, okay? We have the, uh, the, the formula for uh, average value, it is like this, okay? Now we just integrate, it's a matter of integrating this, uh, this, this uh, integrand, right? You just put the, everything into this uh, equation, you put Vm sine omega t, so you can take the Vm out here and the rest is the integral of the uh, you know integral of zero to t sine square of omega t dt this is this is the the things that you learn from the calculus so everybody can do this by yourself right i, I just leave this as a calculus things because uh, you, you everybody have learned it okay the integral of sine square x dx is this guy so one you you can you know you, the first thing you have to do is that you you have to change the the variable right you have to change this variable to um, the omega t you have to change this to d omega t by uh, putting more omega to the to the variable so you have to divide this by an omega okay or you, you you may prefer to to say this is the, the let you technique 
Okay, you you have to you put u as an uh, omega t and du is omega dt, right? So the dt is one over omega d omega t. Okay, this is clear, right? Dt is one over omega d omega t. This is let u, okay? And you change this. Now you see, after the integration, you 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 can see that the average v average value is equal to the magnitude or the maximum value of this uh, the time waveform divided by root two. Okay, that's why when you learn the uh, I mean the circuit class, you always you know memorize that the RMS or the root mean square of uh, of the uh, of the sinusoid is V m over root two. Okay, people would call magnitude or V maximum. Okay, it's the same thing, but um, this is the uh, the 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 wave, uh, I mean, the, the, the peak of the uh, of the sinusoidal waveform. Okay. So please remember, okay, that uh, please be cautious also that uh, the average value of non-sinusoid is not equal to V m divided by root two. This is this is true only when you you deal with sinusoid. All right. So the, the, the grace I, I'm trying to say now I'm trying to answer to you why we use sinusoid, all right? Because the sinusoid, um, you can find the equivalency between uh, the average, right? The, it's easy to to find the average value, okay? And you can see that um, from other classes as well that if you have non-sinusoidal inputs, right? People would try to 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 transform the non-sinusoid into sinusoid okay and that transformation food uh, you, you may know it as a Fourier transform okay uh, this is that is the reason why we we are trying to to deal with the uh, sinusoid most of the time all right um why we use 50 hertz or 60 hertz uh, dating back when uh, by the time uh, the uh, the electricity was uh, Invented right. It's about 18 centuries in the United States. I think we people have used um, so many uh, number of uh, frequencies, right? Uh, you can have a variety of uh, fancy numbers like 140 hertz, right? Uh, 125, 133, uh, 133, for example. Right? You have so many. But nowadays, why we have used only a few, uh, I mean, a number of uh, a few number of frequencies like 60 hertz in North America, Brazil, and Japan. But the, interestingly, in Japan, right, uh, they use uh, two, 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 two frequencies, 50 and 60 hertz in the same si system. Okay, and most of the countries use 50 hertz, and also you can find. Um, I mean, different figure of um, <coughs> uh, frequency, right? For example, 25 hertz in railways, <coughs> Amtrak, okay? For example, like Amtrak rail, uh, that is in the North America, 62, uh, 16 uh, two uh in railways, or 400 hertz in, in, in other applications, okay? This is the reason why we use uh, 50 and 60, okay? If we use too low frequency, right? The too low frequency means that uh, uh, you can see the flickers, okay? Uh, for example, you uh, 10 or 20 hertz and can cause the flickers. And uh, if we use too high frequency, that would incur the, the what we call hysteresis losses and it can you can see that uh, for high frequency, right, you can uh, incur with the uh, hysteresis loss or cable losses, right? And uh, if you use too high frequency, mean, meaning that uh, the inductance, right, of the, of the transmission line would be increased. Okay, because um, the, trans uh, the L will increase, you can see, because uh, the J omega L, right, this is the uh, XL, right? Reactance of the L would be uh, J omega L. If you increase the the, the frequency, right? Uh, the omega will increase. Okay, we increase the impedance. <coughs> Increasing the impedance mean meaning that you know the current can uh, the less current can flow, right? So the first question I, we answer that uh, why why we use fifty and sixty hertz. 
right? If you use too low frequency, you can cause flickers. Uh, if it's too high frequency, then it can incur more losses, especially in power system where you have uh, so many uh, transformers, right? If you use too much, um, especially high power transformer, if you use too high frequency, meaning that the loss in transformers it's is too big, right? And also, you uh, if you use too high frequency for power system, meaning that uh, you increase the uh, reactance of the transmission lines, okay? Your transfer capability, meaning that power transfer capability, is ability of the system to transfer power from point A to B is less, okay? That means that the system is less efficient. Okay. So why we use three phase? Okay. Uh, this is the, the things that you learn from from electric machine already. You can see that we have the stator. Uh, we have the uh, stator, three stators, right? And we have the rotors. Okay. If you put, if you plot the uh, the the magnetic field generated by the three phase coins in the this systems. Now you can see that uh, uh, on on the picture on the on on here, we, we see that we have the current I one, I two, and I three flowing in in the state in the stator coins like this. Okay. Now you see uh, for any instant of time, uh, from for for time zero, you can see the time at time zero the I one, okay, the I I one is zero. Okay, uh, because there is no no i the, the this is an i t right i is zero i two i two is here right i two uh, and i three is positive, so you can see that uh, this is the um, the direction of the uh, of the magnetic field this is a magnetic field vector, right, so you can see that when the time goes from t one up to t twelve. At any time instance, the, the, the magnetic field is just different. The magnetic field, uh, the different direction of magnetic field, meaning that uh, you have different uh, currents, okay? Uh, different magnitude and different uh, directions of the current. If you plot the, uh, the magnetic field vector of each of the phase, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, at any time instance, from T1 up to T6, Okay, T1 up to T6, meaning we are trying to find just, um, you know, half of the waveform, okay, uh, the pi radian like this, this is the uh, uh, half of the I1 waveform up to T6. Now you can see that uh, the sum of uh, the magnetic field vector for the three-phase system is remains constant. You can see at any time instance from T1, T0, T1 up to T6, the resultant, okay, the resultant of the magnetic field, which is the sum of the individual uh, uh, magnetic field vector for each phase, is constant, okay, it's constant because the magnitude is the same, but the direction would be different, okay. This is a one of the reason why you know we, we use the three phase because we observe that um, the constant. Uh, resultant uh, field at any time instant okay no matter how you you rotate you know the uh, the position of the the, the, the core uh, I mean the rotor right when the rotor rotates in, in any di any direction right the magnetic field remains uh, constant okay why we use three phase uh, when we compare with the three one with the single phase now you can see you have uh, one stator and one rotor like this right uh, for a single phase case you you observe that the thing the magnetic field is not constant at any time instance so for we, we compare uh, from t t0 to up to t6 as well right the uh, the the length of the vector is not the same okay that is the grace or this is benefit of using the three phase uh, system i'm sorry this is in, in german but uh, uh, you can you can understand this okay uh, this is the, uh, the 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 answer to to the question why we use three phase from the voltage point of view okay um i phasic 
Okay, eins, zwei, drei, vier means that one, two, three. You can, you can, you can, you can uh, note this one. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. One, two, three, four. Fasig means face, right? Okay. So you can see that for I fasig, okay, uh, Wechselstrom system. Wechselstrom is an AC. Okay. If you use a single phase AC, for example, uh, the train light 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 on the right hand side, the red train, uh, you can see that we normally use the two conductors. Okay, this is the explanation why we use um, the um, um, uh, three phase. Right? Why should we use three phase? Now we have explained from the voltage point of view and the number of conductors. If you use the um, uh, one sing a single phase, then you need for example, the uh, uh, locomotive, right? Electri electro the locomotive like this. Okay, the voltage drop across this uh, 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 between the 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 conductor here and the uh, the ground like this, right? This would create the voltage difference between the two points. So if you use a uh, single phase, then you need you need two conductors. Why lighter? Lighter means conductor. Okay. So now you can use the, the earth as uh, 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 the returning conductor. We can say because the, the current has to flow and there has, must be the returning path, right? Uh, you can use uh, add, which is earth as a rook lighter. Rook lighter is rook means return, lighter, you know, conductor. Returning conductor means that the current would flow this direction and we go back into the, this, the, the other direction. So one phase you need two conductors and the, um, the uh, um, average right average uh, uh, power is P is equal to U which is a voltage time current times uh, cosine phi which is power factor. All right with one phase two you have to use uh, two conductors you get just one pow uh, power of the multiplication between U I. All right. Now you see in the case of the two phase, two swai fasig, stringer A A un B, meaning that the, the the conductor between phase A and B, A and B, which is A here and B here, right? A and B, you need a dry lighter. You need three conductors. You know when we when we talk about voltage, there must be the drop between one point to the other. There must be the the potential difference between two points. <coughs> For example, in this case, if you have two phase, right, you must have the reference somehow. At least one reference must be there. Okay. Now you see, if you have the phase A and B like this, you must have a reference. That's why you need dry lighter. You need three conductors. And in this case, you see, you have two phases. If the phase two, the two phases, the two conductors are the same, the power that you would increase by using the two phase is twice. Okay, so you get the constant, constant Leistung, meaning that meaning that Leistung is power. Okay, you you can uh, write this yourself. Leistung is power. Now you get with the two phase, you get constant power constant Leistung and the power is um, two times right it says twice u times i all right um, let's go back to the thing uh, uh, the the single phase single phase you get if you see from this slides Pusierende Leistung okay Pusierende Leistung now uh, in English is is easy okay Pusierende is pulsating now, uh, you have to, you should write this yourself. This is pulsating, pulsating power. Pulsating means it's just the lines of pulse. It's fluctuating. It's changing with time. Okay, you can see that the power is uh, has a double frequency. This this one you learned it already because you multiply u times i, right? V or V times I, the two uh, sinusoid in multiplication, okay, uh, sine times sine or cosine times cosine, then you get 
you know the sum of the the angles you have to use the trick identity right um, you would increase the, um, the, the the frequency by double okay and the power itself is is, is pulsating now we 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 uh, we have when we use the uh, uh, multiple phases multiple means in this case uh, from 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 two phases onwards two three four now you can see from this chart that when we use two three or four the power uh, becomes constant okay constant lies to uh, in zwei phasig drei phasig und vier phasig Okay, you have a uh, constant lies too. Now you can see, right? Um, the for example, the three phases. In three phases, it's, it's the only case, right, where we have the uh, uh, three phases, three conductors. Why do we have so? We have the phase U V W. This is this is the uh, international standard. Right? When we say uh, three phases, most of the time, right? especially when we work with the, in the power industry, you see the, all the equipments, I mean most of the equipments are from Germany. And you know, if, you, if you happen to see um, uh, an equipment with uh, UVW, okay, you, uh, you should know that this is the indication of different uh, uh, phases, okay? different phases. So we have U V W. Uh, that's why we we have we see here. Uh, it can be U V, right? Uh, U would be here, V would be here, and W would be here, right? Um, now you see uh, this is the in the three phase system. You have um, three conductors in three phase, right? And you have also the grace of constant power and the phase angle, phase angle, fast and boom, okay? Phase angle, phase difference, for Sheben is is different. Okay, um, that's why um, this is the um, uh, phase difference of one twenty degree, right? Uh, in the, the, the in the in the uh, this one um, on the picture on the right indicates the 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 phase phaser diagram, right? So now you see that if you have the two phases, the angle difference between two phases is ninety degree. And the if you have uh, three phases, right? Three phase, uh, the uh, phase difference, right? Uh, between each phases is one twenty, and four phases becomes uh, the phase difference between uh, bet uh, becomes ninety. Okay, so now you can see that uh, the three, the three is the magic number. Okay. The three is the minimum number of uh, co uh, conductors. What we have to use, you see, uh, three phases. You have to, you use just three conductors. Okay, that would result in constant uh, 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 power. Okay, the the idea is that you know in power in power we need a constant power. Now you can see uh, if you use three phase. Is the minimum number of conductor is used, which will produce the constant uh, 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 power capability, right? So that's why we uh, 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 the professor is written in, in, in the box like this: minimal light to sun, minimal minimum number of conductor, which is three dry by constant Merklister growth lies to pay. Okay, this is the uh, the discovery of Dobrovolsky in 1888. Okay, that's why we use three phase. Okay, now you should be able to answer. The three phase is, you, of course, you can use four phases because four phases. In this case, <coughs> you have to you use four uh, conductors, right? And you get constant power of four times. Right, but now in this case, you you have to increase uh, one number more number of conductors, which is which, which means that you have to invest more. Okay, so the minimum, the optimum value is three in this case. Okay, now um, we put the analogy. Okay, everybody knows that when we talk about electricity, we try to we, we can put the analogy uh, of uh, the hydraulic system or water, right? So you can see that the current is flowing from 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 higher potential to the lower potential. 
okay for example you have the r like this the current flowing in this direction okay um, that means that uh, the potential at this point right is greater than the potential on the other point so we will, we can straight away write the plus sign at this point and the minus sign on the other end and the voltage difference between these two right would define or you write you can see that plus and minus here the current will flow from uh, left to right this is the resistor right so you can also put the analogy that you know when you pour the water the water uh, the water has to go down right has to come down like this so the water from the upper tank right we can flow to the lower tank so this upper tank here has a uh, higher potential than uh, potential energy than the, the, the than the lower tank that's why the current or the water stream will flow from from upper upper part to the lower part right so you can see that the two uh, system can be uh, compared right for the electrical systems when we say the uh, generator or the load right the generator means like a, a pump and the load is the motor right and the current flows from generator to the load is just like the flu fluid flow from the pump to the motor right how uh, how the uh, flow fluid will flow the, it is it, or the current will flow it must uh, flow due to the voltage difference or pressure difference between the two points right uh, that's why you can you can have this analogy okay uh, similarly you can also uh, have the the same analogy with the three phase system with the three with the hydraulic system as well okay now you can see that uh, if you talk about three phase what do we mean by a three phase system essentially the three phase system is three times is the three separate circuits of a single phase system okay now you can see that uh, three single phase systems okay would comprise it into into uh, one three phase system a single three phase system Okay, you can see that um, the above picture, right? We have uh, the circuit. The circuit by 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 talking about circuit, okay. Circuit is the uh, the closest path of electrical elements. Okay, this is the uh, basic definition. Okay, so the closest path mean meaning that if you have three circuits mean you have three closed paths now you see uh, on the first picture right we have one source source is one of the is one of the uh, element right circuit element you have the source you have the load which is c here you have transmission line basically this is one circuit okay because this is a closed path closed path meaning that it can come back to the same to the to the same position okay now you see you have the uh, circuit of VB uh, and IB flowing through the load. So you have the other circuit, the other circuit one, two, circuit one, circuit two, and circuit three. So now this uh, the three single phase uh, systems we can combine. It's, it's equivalent to a single, right? Three phase system. Now you see we have three phases like this, right? <coughs> You connect this IA, IB, IC, right? The IB, IA, IB, IC, you have uh, uh, three lines, three transmission line or three conductors, okay? Now you can argue with me. You can see that we, why do we have four lines over here? We have IN here, which is neutral, okay? This is neutral. So my, uh, my explanation earlier, is it true or not true? Because you know you can see that now we have three phases, but we have four conductors, right? Okay, we will we will come back to this later in just a few minutes. Okay, we will see why do we ha why uh, we have the neutral and in which circumstance we we could uh, remove the neutral. Now you can see that if we have the the balance uh, three phase system balance, what do we mean by balance? Or balance, we can call uh, 
if you have balance and you of course you must have unbalanced okay okay if things are balanced meaning that uh, I mean if you have two two arms left arm and right arms and you ca I carry the same amount of mass you have with the same mass on my left hand and on my right hand okay I can put my hand two hands I can I can hold my two hands in a balanced position okay but if I increase the mass on my left hand okay uh, my my left hand can go down and this is uh, not uh, this is unbalanced anymore okay for example we have the, the scale it can be the scale right pushing the same mass on uh, left and right like this right okay this is this is for justice right <laughs> uh, which is not doesn't exist in, in in this country okay for example i carry this one kg and one kg okay and this the justice the the, the scale is remains balanced can be re, can remain balanced but now if i put uh, another kg here one kg okay the this is unbalanced anymore because this is heavier than the the right right okay this is what, what we mean by balance or unbalanced the other term of balance it can be called symmetrical okay symmetrical symmetrical means that you know uh, symmetrical it will look from from the perspective okay from the picture itself if you cut this okay the scale into half and you see if the scales on left and right are the same Right, you see the two pictures. The pictures on the left is identical to the picture on the right. This is called symmetrical, right? So by having the balance, okay, by having the balance load between the 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 two sides, the scales remain symmetrical, right? So by having this balance or symmetrical three phase system, meaning that each of the phase or each of the circuit, right, each of the sub circuits are identical so this is the the concept by balanced three-phase system you, you 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 have to take note during the during my lecture all right because uh, in the slides uh, there are not so many details right uh, you can see that uh, I, I keep writing on this uh, uh, on the slides okay so for those who just you know just uh, open their video clips without uh, taking any notes I have to uh, I have to warn you, right, that uh, you, you have to spend so much attention because uh, um, this is your own future, all right? This is your own future. It's not my future. I, 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 I knew this stuff already, okay, and have used this for, for years, okay? But you learn, if you learn this for the first time, it's not that, it's not easy. Nothing in this world is easy, all right? I have to, to warn you, okay? And uh, yeah, it's you, you, you create your own future. That's what I can say, right? Um, the balanced three phase system, okay, meaning that uh, each of the three phase is identical, okay? Each of the three phase is identical, meaning that the voltage is the same the impedance or the load is the same all right so the voltage in three phases have the same amplitude but different in uh, in phase angle by uh, the, uh, the phase angle separation is uh, 120 degree okay so the terms of the phase uh, 120 degree it should be called phase separation Okay, in in uh, in the in in, in English in, in 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 academic English is called phase separation. Okay, that's in German it's called Fassenverschiebung. Verschiebung is separate. Okay, I I, I made the wrong uh, translation in in the in the in, in earlier right. Okay, separation of 120 and the equal impedance in the three phases. This is the picture that uh, we will we will we'll linger. We'll be lingering in this. Uh, in this lecture right when we have the phase and uh, i mean the equivalence i mean uh, balance three phase va vb and vc this is what we call abc phase sequence abc sequence 
Okay, so that's a, there are two possibilities. Okay, when we when we when we try to uh, we we have the uh, V A V B V C. So everybody knows that uh, uh, this V A V B V C is is rotating, right? With time, it's a representation of uh, it's a project projection of uh, sinusoid, right? So you can see that the location of uh, I mean the 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 face the the phase diagram here we change uh, uh, we will ro we'll be rotating uh, according to the synchronous speed okay so the synchronous rotation uh, it's you know uh, it's rotating with synchronous speed of for example one is equal to uh, n is equal to 120 f divided by p okay this is the the rotation of the machine n is equal to 100 f divided by p and p is the number of poles and 50 hertz right now you can compute right for example 120 uh, the frequency of for example in, in thailand is 50 hertz and the uh, number of poles the basic poles you have uh, you must have north and south right two poles so you, this uh, uh, you know the the rotation of the rotor okay the speed of the, the rotor speed right uh, this is the rotor and you have you must have the uh, two poles like this, right? So the two poles like this, uh, the rotation of the synchronous speed is 3000 RPM, okay? 3000 RPM, okay? This is 3000 RPM. So uh, the rotation of the, uh, the three vectors is rotating with 3000 RPM, okay? And the sequence, or the order of the uh, the occurrence of the phase, if it is uh, written like this, okay, A, B here and C here. Now you can see that uh, we call A, B, C phase sequence because the 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 the, rot the rotational direction of this, if you rotate counterclockwise, okay, we always define it as a positive direction. This is what we 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 learned it right uh, in 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 many classes right. If you rotate something uh, counterclockwise, that is the positive uh, direction. Now you see, if you stand here up here at the, at the uh, reference point, if you put the the reference axis. Okay, you stand at the at the zero degree. Now you see the 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 the, the phase A first. You see the V A first. Right, following by VB and followed by VC. That's why we call ABC phase sequence, right? But if you have right the vector, the order of vector change like this. Okay, we have VA up here, VA, and we have VB, VC here, and another possibility is that we have VB here. Now. The phase sequence will change because you're standing here, right, and you rotate at in the uh, the clockwise uh, direction, counterclockwise direction. Now you see phase A followed by C and followed by B. Okay, now this is the what we call A C B sequence phase sequence. All right, this is A C B phase sequence. This is just to recap. This thing should have uh, you know learned from 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 uh, electric circuits already, right? Now you can see we have uh, ABC phase sequence and you have uh, ACB phase sequence. So I have to put uh, here phase sequence also, right? Now you can also define right. Uh, uh, this is what we have with the uh, the voltage. So what happened to the current? Okay, the current is since this is the uh, the LTI systems. Okay, so in this picture you can also observe the characteristics of LTI because the LTI means that uh, it can change the magnitude and phase angle. Right, two 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 changes can be po uh, two changes are possible. Now the VA is here. Okay. VB and VC, you can see that the vector diagram of IA, IB, and IC, now you see IA, the magnitude 
right? The anchor of, I mean, the the absolute of this uh, i is less than the v. Okay, the abs the magnitude of the vector is is different, and also, you know, the um, the phase angle is different as well because essentially the i just lack the v in this case. So it is a, a lacking. Uh, power factor in this case or uh, it is an inductive okay by saying it is a lacking okay lacking is a characteristic of inductor and leading is a characteristic of capacitor this is the things that you learn from from circuit okay this is a circuit okay now you see uh, this is then uh, the, uh, you you can observe the uh, characteristics the two important characteristics of LTI you can mark this okay LTI the change in magnitude so magnitude is different you see the VA and IA okay the arm the length of the vector arm is different and the angle separation is different because the the angle here is is you know between uh, V and I just differ okay. Now, you can see from here, if it is the uh, balanced free phase, the important thing is, you know, you have the, uh, the sum of the current, okay? If you put uh, the balance uh, 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 phase diagram like this, for example, you, you, you sum all the currents. The sum of the current, you put IA, okay? plus IB plus IC. This is the, uh, the sum of these three vectors. Now you, you can see that the sum of these three vectors just, be, just return back to the zero, right? So meaning that the sum of this uh, current IA plus IB plus IC is zero. Now you see, if you put the, if you see the current at the, uh, at the common point here or the neutral point, okay, neutral, so I have to emphasize with you, the neutral here doesn't mean that it is a ground. So the neutral, the term neutral and the ground is different, okay? The ground means that uh, you have to get the reference point, right? Normally when we put it as a reference, you, 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 you always say that the, the voltage at this point, the potential of this point is zero, okay? The potential is zero. So I put, it's, it's not voltage, voltage it's, it's, it's uh, it's a potential difference, right? The reference in the, as a reference, then normally we put the potential equal to zero. Okay, and this is ground. Ground or earth is the same, right? Uh, but the neutral is not ground, it's not earth. It can be ground, it can be earth, do you? Because the neutral can be connected to, to the ground, right? But in this case, the neutral is not connected to the ground. Neutral in, in, in general term, okay, in the general term, it can be called a uh, common point. I, I would say this is a common point. It's a point where you connect, okay, uh, different equipment. So you can you, you connect uh, the three equipments of the, of the three phase systems, okay. Now you see, you put uh, you, the impedance of uh, uh, phase A, phase B, phase C, you put the three impedances, you put three impedances at this neutral point, all right? So that's why the sum of the current IA plus IB plus IC, if you put the KCL at this uh, neutral point, IA plus IB plus IC is equal to IN, but the, uh, the sum of these three guys are zero, right? So the IN is zero. Now, in balanced three-phase system, there is no uh, IN. Okay, there is no IN. If the three phase are uh, balanced or symmetrical, there is no neutral current. Okay, so take the note, please. In this case, okay, for you write the uh, as a verbal expression, and you remember you have to read it. Okay, um, the neutral current is zero in balanced system. Balanced three phase system. All right. Neutral current is zero in balanced three phase system. Okay. 
All right. Now you can see this is the ex uh, explanation I, I have said already. The balanced reflex system can be uh, synthesis balanced and you can remove uh, the neutral now you can see that the neutral path is not is no long doesn't uh, is no longer exist in this case right and you see that the uh, three of the phase must be identical right otherwise it's not uh, the, the I mean the whole three phase system is not balanced now uh, you can come to the concept here okay if you have three phase system okay and you can see that uh, each of the phase is identical, right? And the phase angle, since it, uh, the three phase system is an LTI system, so the the uh, magnitude can change, the phase angle can change, okay? The property of uh, uh, of the three phase is that the magnitude of the uh, voltage in in each of these three phases is equal. Okay, you can see from here the, the phase diagram, the phaser diagram here, the length of each arm must be identical and the and the uh, uh, phase separation between the uh, phase A and B, phase A and C is, is 120 degree, right? So now um, the key is that you know when we analyze the, uh, the balanced three phase system, you can just analyze one phase. Okay, you know that if you calculate it, uh, all the circuit parameters from one phase, okay, you know the uh, the magnitude of the other two phases is equal are uh, equal, right? And the angle separation is different, okay? The, the angles the phase separation is 120 degree and 240 degree. For example, you put you analyze phase A and you know that. Uh, your system is positive. I mean, uh, ABC phase sequence. Okay. Uh, okay. In this case, in ABC phase sequence, in in other term, it call it is called uh, positive sequence. Okay. And ACB we call negative sequence. Okay. If it happens to uh, uh, if if during this lecture I I say positive sequence or negative sequence. Uh, you should not get confused, right? What we mean by positive sequence? What the heck is the positive sequence? No, no. you should not be confused with that, right? <coughs> so the idea is is like this, all right? Um, I think we, we uh, I, I have to stop here, and then we uh, I, I will come back to the to the uh, to the next point of the phaser concept, and also you know uh, I will do a lot uh, a lot of examples with you also in 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 the video clips, and also when we when we meet on campus, All right? So the concept that we will be discussing in this lecture is about the uh, um, uh, called single phase calculation or per phase calculation, all right? Uh, as we discussed earlier that uh, the condition in which we have uh, the balanced system or symmetrical system, okay, the balance could, uh, could be called symmetrical as well, okay? Um, is that the concept of an analyzing a balanced uh, uh, three phase system is that uh, all the th that means that all the three phases are having the same uh, 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 loads and the sorts are having the same uh, magnitude as well so uh, last time we, we we have discussed that the uh, um, if the both I mean if a system is balanced meaning that the the voltage magnitudes of all the three phases are having uh, the uh, equal magnitude in this case we have um, VA VB and VC with the equal length if we express this in terms of uh, of um, a phaser diagram and the power system is assumed to be LTI system meaning this is ta linear time invariant Okay, meaning that we put um, the the sinusoidal voltage in, and you get the sinusoidal voltage out, and of course, you know the magnitude could be different, and um, the uh, the angle 
can be uh, the face angle can be shifted. So in this case, if we put the VA and the ang face angle uh, can be shifted. In this case, the the I just lack the V. Okay, and you can see that uh, the properties of the LTI. If you uh, want to recall this a little bit, uh, the property of the uh, of the LTI is that the magnitude is uh, can be different. It can be changed, and the face angle can be changed. All right. Um, this is the concept. So you can see that uh, since we have the balanced three phase, meaning each of the three phases are similar. I think this is the same uh, equivalency, right? You can see that uh, uh, we have three single phase uh, systems that is equal to, or uh, it is equivalent to uh, one or a single three phase system. Okay, so later on you can see that uh, in this case we uh, we have uh, uh, three phase but four lines. But later on you you will see that you can uh, remove uh, the uh, the neutral line. Okay, because there is no no line flowing through this. Okay, uh, we have seen this from last time that already that the uh, when there is an when the system is balanced, meaning I A plus I B plus I C is equal to zero, or the I neutral is zero. So you can uh, remove this uh, conductor out of your uh, 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 three phase balance system. Okay, so now you can see that we do, we have removed the the neutral line, and we can analyze uh, the uh, the system, okay, this system by uh, referring to just the, 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 the phase A. In this case, the phase is the, okay, this is a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's A, and you have the phase B, and you can also have the phase C, all right, if I phase A, B, and C. So when you uh, want to have the per phase analysis, meaning you, you just take you know, uh, one of the phase out of the three phase. So we have the phase A with respect to to the neutral. Okay. Uh, in this case, we just remove this. Oh, but in this case, if you have um, the uh, line impedance, for example, uh, Z line. Okay. You could you could have the Z line, uh, and also this is a Z line will be here. Okay. Similarly, if it is a balanced three phase system, the, you have set line and in phase A, so the uh, line of phase B will have the same impedance, and so does the line of the phase C. Okay, with that, uh, all these three will have the same uh, line impedances. Okay, and then we, we take the uh, one of the phase out as a, C, as a Z. Okay, so the concept is that uh, it, there. <clears throat> in three phase system there should be a common point of connection as we discussed last time the neutral okay uh, but in this case the the line connected between these two neutral is removed because there is no current flowing into uh, in in this line right we have removed this so the concept here is that if you use a single phase calculation um, if you have a neutral okay you can write this the circuit in this way that the current flowing from the source uh, all the way through the line and uh, going to the load and the, the, the current just terminate back from uh, the load back to the source via a neutral okay via a neutral virtually by the neutral okay and if in the case that if there is no neutral okay if there is no neutral, for example, you have the delta connection. Okay, by talking about del con delta connection, uh, it is like this. This is like a delta, or this is a triangle, triangle shape, triangular shape. We have um, the impedance for uh, three. Uh, I, I mean, we have the three loads connected in into the delta. Okay, head to tail connection. You would say this is a um, head to tail. Head of this guy is connected to the tail of this guy. So if you have the delta, meaning the delta doesn't have the common point of co uh, connection. Okay, uh, what do we mean by neutral? Is a common point, right, of connection. It is a point in which all the three uh, equipments are connected to each other. So now you see that uh, when you have the delta connection, there is no common point. Okay, if you have the delta connection, you need to 
uh, create the, the virtual neutral okay uh, if there is no neutral f such as uh, delta connection okay you need to okay we need to you or we need to we need to convert it to star or y connection because what we need from here is the the, the neutral point okay because we need a neutral point okay uh, so in this case, uh, we will show from this example, okay, the concept of using uh, the per phase analysis is that we are we are trying to to to, to extract one of the uh, three phases out, and we just analyze that uh, that single phase, okay. Soon after, you know the the voltage or current quantities, so you know. You know that if your, uh, the three-phase system is balanced, meaning the magnitude of <coughs> of the all the phases is equal, but uh, uh, but the uh, the phase angle shift is at 120 degree. If it is positive phase sequence, then uh, the positive. I mean, if V A is here and V B is here and V C is here, so you have the A B C phase sequence this is the anchor of zero then now here the anchor would be um, uh, minus 120 and here uh, it is plus 120 or the anchor would be minus 240 okay and the uh, the the magnitude would be the same okay the magnitude is the same this is called a uh, single phase uh, I mean this is the positive phase sequence right so what we will see is that we are trying to solve for for just this particular phase for or phase A, and then the magnitude of uh, the other phase is equal with the angle shift of 120 degree, either plus or minus, because this minus is phase B, and uh, if you put plus, 120 is the same as minus 240. All right, that is the concept of pair phase analysis. So you can see that uh, we're trying to extract just the phase A with respect to the neutral. Then you can see that uh, the connection between uh, uh, all these neutral. You see, we have the neutral N prime and N double prime here. You see, uh, if this system, the whole bunch of this uh, system is balanced, if balanced, I mean, if, if the system is balanced, we can remove, okay, we can, we can remove C n and C n prime because there is no because what because uh, the i n is is zero the the i n is zero uh, i n from this picture is zero and uh, you can also denote the i n prime over here and i n prime is also zero. Okay, therefore you could remove this, right? But the circuit, this is called the on the picture on the right side. It's called equivalent circuit. Okay, so this equivalent circuit will show you just the connection between the, just uh, this this just just be applicable to phase A only. So we we write the A with respect to the neutral. Okay, now you see that there is no current flowing in through to to this. Uh, Zn and Cn double prime, so you can see that in uh, the equivalent circuit, you don't see any Cn or uh, Cn prime over here. There is no no Z in between. Uh, you may wonder why we just remove this um, Cn and Cn double prime out of the original circuit or from the three phase circuit, but you can see, you you see this is uh, why is it connected like this. Okay, it must be connected because this is a circuit. Okay, otherwise there is no uh, possibility of the current to flow into the system because if you don't connect uh, the point between n and n prime or an n, n prime between n and n, n prime and n double prime, so there this is an open circuit. So there is no current flowing in the circuit, and you don't have any current going to the load. Okay. Um, this is just the, um, the, the, the closed path of the current to flow. This is all, well, in, in power system, we call the returning path. Okay. Okay. Um, that's why you can see, okay, uh, this uh, three-phase balance system, 
Okay, we, when we want to analyze it in just an, a, a single phase, you, you extract one of the phase. Uh, in this case, we use the phase A as our reference, and we compute, for example, we want to compute the voltage drop for, for the load one. Okay, in this case, it could be called this bunch, the first bunch is called a uh, load one. Okay, and uh, this could be called the load two. Okay. This can be called a load 2, load 1 and load 2, uh, because um, you see, uh, what about the CL over here? It should be C, C1, okay? It can be C1. C1 here is the, the line, uh, I mean the impedance of the line connected between the source and the load 1. And C3 is the um, impedance of the line connected between load 1 and load 2, okay? So if the problem asks you to find to determine the current flowing in, okay, if your problem says what's the current flowing in each load, okay, what's the quantity here? The current flowing in each load, meaning the current uh, to flow inside each of this load, okay. This means this two quantity, okay. Now you can see that uh, these two currents means, you know, it's the same as when you uh, determine the current uh, from this picture, okay? Uh, in order to find the IA over here, it's the same as uh, computing the, the current flowing in inside this phase, okay? It's the current flowing inside this one here, IA. And um, when you want to find the current IB, you can see that if the IB here is the same as the current flowing uh, through this, uh, the impedance uh, Z3, okay, this also IB, and here this is the IB, and it's the same as here, the IB, okay. So, in this case, if you want to find uh, the current flowing through uh, each load, okay, you have to determine the IA and IB from this, uh, from this circuit. You may get confused with IA and IB because it's still uh, connected to 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 um, the uh, the phase A. So let me denote this IA as the uh, uh, the uh, let me put the subscription of IA prime N prime because this is an I uh, flowing from the uh, node A prime to N prime, and in this case, uh, IB here would be the uh, IA prime flowing from A prime to N double prime. Okay. So uh, let me change this a little bit. So uh, the um, the current flow in each load for the load one, the your I, this is I A prime N prime, flowing from the this node to this node, okay. And the current flowing for uh, in load two, it's the current flowing from the node A prime to N double prime. So this is the I uh, A prime to N double prime, okay? Now, you can compute this one. And what about the, the concept, in this case, for the node, for the phase B? For phase B, this is the current flowing from, from the source of the phase B, and uh, this current, once it goes to, to, to this, this node, okay? Let's look at this node, okay? If we take a look at this node, node B double prime, at this one here, there is two paths of the current to flow. The current I, IB flowing from the source when it goes to this node, okay? There is two ways that the current can rewind, okay? Either the, 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 the current could flow in this direction from uh, B prime to N prime, okay? And the, this is another one. Uh, the current is flowing in this direction, okay? This is the, this is the direction from node B prime to n double prime, okay, and this current, I mean this current I B prime n prime is going through uh, the load one, okay, the load one, and the um, the B prime uh, n double prime is going to phase B of the load two, okay, the phase B of the load two. Now, if you, if you can manage, you know, to to, to use the per phase unit and you could so if you could solve this uh, uh, circuit successfully all right uh, you can you can know straight away that what the uh, uh, what these two number are I mean 
if you know i a prime n prime what about i b prime n prime okay i a prime n prime let's suppose this is an x and the angle of theta okay because this could be computed this must be in complex quantity and with the magnitude of x and the um, the uh, 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 phase angle of theta what about i b prime n prime here okay i b prime n prime it is simply x and the angle of theta minus 120 if we assume that we put the uh, the phase angle i mean if you put the uh, three phase uh, uh, voltage in positive sequence okay if it in positive sequence how would you know that this is positive sequence so you could uh, you know if the problems give you uh, or you could assume it okay basically uh, normally the um, the phase sequence is assumed to be uh, positive okay so this is an i b prime n prime and what about i um, what you can see what about i c prime n prime this is the current flowing in um, um, uh, to phase one fa uh, i mean phase c of load one okay now this would become x and angle of theta minus 240 degree okay this is in amps in m for example right and similarly you can see if you can determine this i a prime n prime that's it e that's that's easy okay um, you see first you need to compute from this circuit right uh, the way we could compute this is you have to find the IA first the, or the total current uh, from the supply side. Okay, you have to find the IA first. How would you find IA? From this case, the, the IA is what? Knowing this, all these four um, impedances, right? Knowing this, all these four impedances, so you can see that um, your IA, you have to determine the IA first. Soon after you know the IA, uh, these two are uh, current division, or you can apply the current divider uh, circuit to find IA prime n prime, and the difference between what you know from uh, IA prime n prime with IA, it's it, it is this this guy IA prime n double prime, right? Let me uh, write uh, the equation for you. You, you will you will have this um, exercise in a separate video clip, and I uh, strongly encourage you to to go through that uh, that example, and you try to you should try to solve uh, that example yourself first, and uh, you should compare with my solution, right? So in this case, um, the way we find I and uh, I A, okay, you have to determine I A first. Uh, that is the uh, E one divided by the total uh, impedances, or right, the the total equivalent impedance, or this is a ZEQ. Okay, let let me denote this is as a ZEQ. That is the total equivalence impedance of this whole bunch in green. Where the ZEQ? How would you determine the ZEQ? Your CEQ is the C1 plus C1's in series with the C2 in parallel with C3 plus C4, right? So that is C1 plus uh, C2 in parallel with uh, C3 plus C4, okay? So this is what you, can, you, 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 you could manage, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Okay, you need to determine this to this guy first uh, from the product div divided by the sum. Okay, uh, that should be the C two times C three plus C four divided by the sum that is C two plus C three plus C four. Okay, all these are in complex, and uh, this is plus C one here. Okay, uh, so that would equal to C E Q. And then you put this guy as the the uh, denominator, and then you get the IA. And if you want to find IA prime n prime, okay, that should be the um, the uh, the opposite. I mean, uh, from the current division, that should be C three plus C four divided by the sum C two plus Z three plus C four and divided by uh, multiplied by IA okay this is the IA prime n prime similarly 
uh, if you put the um, I mean if you use the current divider okay for to determine I a prime n double prime you could also find it's from C2 the opposite you, you find since you find you want to find the current here this is an, an opposite branch divided by the total sum that is the C2 plus C3 plus C4 multiplied by the total current I A alright so this what you can find from here okay this is the uh, this is the approach that you could could take for this um, example alright so this is the uh, the other quantity that you you, you you need to know when you analyze the the per phase uh, I mean the three phase balance system that is called line to line voltage. Okay, normally when we deal with uh, um, uh, three phase or multiple phase uh, system, okay, since you know, you know it already that uh, this is the reason why we use the three phase because the three phase um, we use uh, minimum conductors right we use uh, three phase we use three conductors okay so when we when we measure the voltage voltage means the potential difference between two points okay uh, normally in practice okay in practice we use uh, the line to line quantity meaning we when we measure the uh, the voltage at any point on along the along the line for example here along the transmission line okay you, you see this is called generator and this is the load so the generation and this is the load is distribution right when we say uh, power system means the GTD is there we need to put the G GTD okay so the T part is here the whole thing is that the T part or transmission part normally when we when we see in the transmission part uh, it's not that easy you know when you to, to find the reference point if you measure the voltage along the transmission line the transmission line could be um, tens of kilometers 30 kilometers 100 kilometers 200 kilometers okay how would you find the reference point uh, on the transmission line that is not easy right that is not easy so the quantities that we normally use in the uh, in the real practice is called line quantities. So we normally we measure the voltage across the the two lines. In this case, we have the uh, phase A, B, and C. So these V A B, V A C, and V B C are called uh, line voltage. Okay, we call line voltage because this is the uh, the poten potential difference between point of the phase A with respect to to phase B right you, you rem remember the uh, the double subscription the meanings of the uh, double subscription okay we a b means we want to uh, measure how much uh, the voltage at point A is greater than the voltage at point uh, I mean potential at point A with respect to the potential at point B okay this oh, so these trees are called line quantities okay whereby if you have the common reference if you have a, a, a certain reference point and we measure the voltage with respect to the uh, to the common point okay in this case uh, the common point here is n okay n if you measure the voltage uh, how much the potential at point a is greater than this reference okay this is called van van how much the point potential at this point with respect to the common point okay l vbn vbn the arrow is 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 shown cl pretty clearly right at the uh, uh, at, at the direction of the arrow okay we use uh, that means that the, the the potential is is higher than than the the the, the, the other the other the other end of the arrow VBN, VCN. Also, all these trees are called phase quantities. Okay, and uh, the let let me change the color for you. Okay, the these three quantities are called line quantity. Okay, these are called line quantities. So in analyzing um, the three-phase balance system, you need to know the uh, the relationship between these two quantities, okay, especially with the voltage, okay. Now you see the uh, the VAB in this case, 
okay uh, VAB is called live quantity by the way why v VAB so as I said earlier right that is the potential of the uh, the point A right how, how how much the voltage at the point uh, or the potential at the point A is greater than the potential at point B okay so it is what in terms of the uh, uh, phase quantity VAB is called VAN it is it is equal to VAN minus VBN okay N is the voltage at the at uh, uh, or the potential at the neutral point with respect to the ground G is zero okay with respect to the zero okay if it is a single subscription for example we say VA uh, VN for example this must be uh, you know with respect to because the this is potential how high uh, of uh, the voltage at this point it's how high is the potential at this point con uh, compared to the to the potential right to the to the reference which is ground here okay so you can see that VAN minus VBN or if you remember from your circuit class VAN is VA minus VN by using this single uh, subscription means that uh, VA with respect to ground ground is zero volt okay or VN how much is VN because VN is not necessary to be the same as the ground okay uh, this is the we and we if you put the the, the the right definition v a g with respect to ground and v n g okay v a respect to the ground okay v n with respect to the ground ground is always zero bond okay by the way okay and v b n is what it's v b g minus v n g okay v b g minus v n g so that's why you can see that the VNG uh, cancel in this case, right? And the this is the uh, the I mean the equation that you, you you should know already, right? So if if we look, we want to see the the relationship between um, the green quantity and uh, the blue quantity, right? How is the transformation between these two, right? So if we put the the phasor diagram as for 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 our illustration purpose. We see that the VAN, VBN, and VCN are in positive sequence, right? So we, if we want to uh, map the relationship between um, the uh, line quantities, for example, VA, VAB is a line quantity, and these are the phase quantity, right? What's the relationship of this? You can see VAB is VAN minus VBN. VAN is here, min, uh, v, uh, VBN is here okay so uh, what is minus VBN okay the ne or the negative VBN negative VBN is the uh, the vector with the, uh, the same length but different uh, but, but the opposite direction right now you can see that uh, VBN is uh, minus VBN is here because VBN is pointing down and minus VBN is here and you can create the parallelogram of this okay minus VBN is here so this is uh, also uh, minus VBN okay now the vector of VAN minus VBN it's the resultant of which is, is here this is the VAB okay if you can use the cosine law okay that you, you learned it already okay from the uh, I mean the um, geometry class or the physics right now you have uh, you know uh, this is the the equilateral triangle this is an, an, an equilateral triangle okay with the same I mean uh, uh, with the equal base angle here okay and the sum of the angles uh, inside the, the uh, I mean the triangle is 180 degrees so this is 120 degree right and that is 120 okay with the equal length of this so the the length of the the uh, this okay this this vector the length of this is square root 3 okay and the angle is chief by plus 30 degree okay so that's why you can write um, a, a single relationship uh, you can write this relationship is that uh, v line to line okay is equal to square root 3 times v phase 
So if I write this in terms of the complex quantity, so you have to, I have to put you know the angle shift of uh, plus 30 degree. Okay, you have to, I have to put the uh, the 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 angle of uh, 30 degree. For example, here uh, I I I should put it in 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 a general way because the VP VP could be uh, VP and the angle of theta, but you know the, this is phase quantity. Okay, P stands for the phase quantity. By the way, because in in my lecture I always uh, I, I normally I use the the uh, the subscript P as uh, to denote the uh, phase quantity. Okay. But in in some books you also see uh, this uh, notation, okay. The, some book also use the term phi standing for phase quantity as well, okay. So in some books uh, called, they, they can write something like this: three p or s three phase three phase, okay. Three phi is three phase, okay. Uh, doesn't matter, okay. In this case. Um, if we suppose that the VP here it's a it's a polar form in this way or the phase notation of VP is equal to uh, this is the, the complex is equal to the magnitude and the current I mean the angle of theta so this is the becomes theta and plus 30 degree okay plus 30 degree all right so this is the the equation that you 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 have to use it. Okay. Um, let's go through this example. Uh, I I will have a, a very more detailed uh, uh, illustrated example for you. Okay. Um, so this example just give you um, three uh, balanced three phase system with the uh, voltage at the source of 350 over root 2 and the uh, angle is 45 degree okay and you see that the um, the line impedance between uh, the source connected to the first load is uh, j.1 uh, uh, in this case j.1 uh, the unit of which should be given right and this is should be in ohms okay everything is in ohm okay and this is in volt okay and this is the group of the load one load one and we have another load called load two now you see that the load one is connected in star or y connection where the load two is connected in in delta so remember if you have delta delta you have to convert this to to the star because we need the neutral point okay because we need the neutral mm -hmm. And you can see it if the the uh, the system is balanced. System is balanced mean meaning that uh, I n is equal to I a plus I b plus I c. Okay, the sum of all the uh, three currents in for in each phase is zero. When there is uh, current flowing, it's zero it, along this path. Is zero. It's like we remove this. Uh, uh, impedance out of the calculation. So we, the given impedance of one plus j point o one can be removed uh, out of the system. Okay, and uh, that could be clear. Now you need to, uh, you know, transform this uh, to the to uh, from delta load to star. Okay, what is the equal uh, the uh, the equivalent impedance of this? Okay, if you remember from the circuit class, okay, the delta to y connection is pretty sim simple, right? It's divided by the product of, for example, we want to find this guy, okay? It's a product between these two divided by the sum of all these uh, impedances, okay? So by having this uh, equal impedance for each of these phase, Okay, the the summary is that the um, the impedance of the Y connection is just three times less than the impedance of the delta. So this guy is become negative J two over three. Okay, negative J negative J two third. All right, that's why you have this uh, you know single uh, per phase or single phase representation or single phase equivalent circuit. 
okay you have uh, we write the um, the single phase uh, circuit between uh, point a and n to the neutral because we have a and the neutral here right so the problem asks you to determine the the voltage v1 okay this is the voltage at the receiving end of the load one v1 and uh, the problem asks you to determine i2 okay you have to, you need to find i2 uh, the v1 is straightforward pretty straightforward right because uh, the v1 is the same as the voltage drop across this uh, point a prime n prime this is the uh, the the voltage drop across this point a prime n prime in the original circuit here so soon after you uh, you find the uh, the v1 uh, at this position okay uh, you can convert this phaser back to to the original uh, i mean the problem asks you to find the time time function or the sinusoid function of of v1 at t right what the the, way the value you computed from here is in complex phases so you need to convert the complex phaser back to the to the time function that is that that is easy okay that is easy because this is a, a sinusoid function right and you can you can convert it back but the a little bit uh, i mean what uh, uh, I mean the current I2 is a little bit more tricky in this case because you need to transform it back because I2 is the current flowing in the second load okay so uh, by this problem I, I would encourage you to to highlight this uh, the I2 because I2 is a bit more tricky in this case because the I2 if you see from from the equivalent circuit right here the I2 is is current that flows inside the the delta connection. You see, the I2 is flowing in this one, so it's not the same as the current flowing into into the star connection or Y connection. Okay, if if this load were Y connected, the current okay the the current flowing into this phase would be the same as the current flowing through this uh, point a a prime to a this point a prime here okay but this is the current flowing into the delta the current inside the delta if you see from this uh, kcl at this point a prime okay the current flowing from i a prime in this in this guy the, this current here or the light current here right there is there are two paths there are two uh, div division paths because the current entering this uh, point a prime it can go this way or it can go this way okay so the i2 here is not equal to the i uh, flowing in this path okay so you need to divide this so now what what is the quantity here in terms of the the delta connection okay the delta connection if you learn from the your circuit class properly right okay uh, the i uh, this is called i line okay i line and this is these two are the current flowing into the phase let's let's denote phase a b c for example right from a to b from b to a b to c okay and from c to a okay now you see that the current uh, flowing in this phase is called i a b okay and this is i c a okay so i a b and i c a now you can see that uh, if it is a delta connection for delta connection i line because i line is the current flowing into the to to to, to the node a right i line the sum of the current flowing in is the sum is equal to this uh, the current sum of the uh, current flowing out of the node okay so the kcl at node a it's this one so you can see that the il is equal to iab minus ica okay iab minus I ica all right so now you can see that the the i line is essentially uh, root three times okay uh, greater than 
the current of I phase, right? And of course, since you see from here, the the current, I mean the phase anchor of the line and the phase anchor of the current, uh, uh, phase current, right, will be difference by the, I mean the the phase angle difference between line and phase uh, uh, quantities are, are having uh, uh, thirty angle difference too. Now um, you can you can try solving this equation. I I I, I I'm, I'm pretty sure you have all the um, uh, um, I mean important uh, information, right? So now when we see the uh, steady state analysis, right? Uh, this is what you learn from from your circuit part already that uh, uh, most of the time in this during this course you are dealing with the uh, uh, and uh, AC steady state problem of the uh, frequency of 50 Hertz okay if you say 50 Hertz means that the um, the lambda of the 50 Hertz is very uh, it's very long right the one period of 50 Hertz would be taking into account if you you see it's about uh, 6,000 kilometer uh, when we compute it from the speed of light right V is equal to uh this this one 310 to the 8 uh, kilo uh, meter per second right and you can you can compute this uh uh with the frequency of 50 hertz so you can see that the the wavelength of the 50 hertz is almost 6000 kilometers and uh you also try you have to deal with a lot of the uh, the modeling issues in in this course Right, you are trying to model the, the, the transmission line. For example, uh, you will learn it later that the, when we model the transmission line, we have the equivalent circuit like, like this. Okay, this is called a uh, pi model. Okay, we will learn this in, in, in great detail. Right, so this concept is pretty important. Right, especially when we we deal with the uh, power system in steady state. So let let us uh, review the uh, fundamental concept of phaser a little bit. So the phaser is the as it as the name suggests. Okay, phaser is standing from the phase angle. Okay, this is the concept in which we express the sinusoid by the phase angle, by the phase angle only. Okay, if you remember from from the circuit class, or you might learn this from physics as well, um, the projection of a unit circle. This is uh, a unit circle with the uh, with the radius of one, and if you uh, see the rotation of the of an, an object so, uh, along this uh, trajectory of the along the circular trajectory, okay, and uh, you can see that uh, the projection of the movement for example if your uh, your object is here okay the projection of this point uh, onto the horizontal horizontal axis okay the projection of the um, um, uh, object uh, uh, on the horizontal uh, ho on the horizontal axis you would get the cosine function okay this is the cosine function Right. Uh, on the other hand, if you see the projection of uh, of the uh, shadow, right? For example, you put. The, I, I hope you understand this. You have you have a torch lamp like this, okay? And you you see you put the light over here, okay? At this position, that's this position. You see the uh, I mean the shadow at this point and the position of at this position B, uh, the shadow is here. Okay, at this point, your shadow is at the top of this guy here. So the projection along the vertical axis or y axis, you get the psi function, right? And you can see that uh, since we are talking about a unit circle, so the amplitude of this is one, and uh, the maximum of this is one as well. Then the, the, the minimum is negative one at this point. Okay negative one so this is a sinusoid all right so everything is is already discussed okay we have the um, you know uh, if for example we have the time function of 100 divided by root 2 cosine uh, omega t plus 30 degree 
okay um, the way we express uh, in terms of the phaser is that we just take the magnitude right um, the magnitude uh, of the phase angle uh, of the phaser okay it's a root root two times less because we, we express it in terms of uh, an, an arm s value right uh, you can see that uh, in, in a lot of books when when people use you know um, uh, VT okay as a uh, root hundred times root two that means that we want to write the um, the magnitude of uh, the phaser of the mag uh, magnitude of the phaser to be a hundred volt okay now you can you, you can go back to a little bit okay you can observe that when people say that this is uh, 350 divided by root 2 means that in time function okay that is 350 of cosine of omega t right plus 45 degree this is the uh, ea ea t okay remember uh, uh, the small letter and capital letter does matter in 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 calculation right because if we say the small letter small letter is always times function okay where the capital is always represents the the same quantity in in complex domain or in phase domain right now you see vt it's what it's uh, it's 100 root 2 and angle of 30 degrees so when you write the uh, phase angle this is become root 2 and angle of 30 and you can use the euler uh, identity right this uh, anchor of 30 degree or this uh, I mean the Euler used this um, the, but actually Euler doesn't use this Euler used uh, exponential of the uh, imaginary power e to the j theta okay but the the, the, the sign of uh, you know anchor of theta it's more towards the you know American use okay e to the j theta is cosine theta plus j sine theta okay if you learn from mathematics it is i okay it is i or the square, square root of negative one okay it's an imaginary unit so remember well in electrical engineering we don't use the why don't we use i as I said earlier right uh, the uh, small letter is preserved for the uh, time function and in electrical engineering okay we use I to represent current okay so the imaginary unit or the square root of negative one uh, if you use the the small i like in mathematics you would get confused with whether or not it is uh, a, a tau function of current or it is an uh, imaginary unit okay so I, I think this is the fundamental you you have you can have you know different uh, algebraic property right of the phaser okay uh, that is the um, the uh, the property of a complex number you have the uh, uh, property of addition subtraction uh, complex conjugate uh, down the on the on the left side it is for the uh, 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 Cartesian coordinate okay that is that is in um, Cartesian coordinate let me why is it so uh, never mind um, I, I, I'm gonna show the uh, the slide this this slide again right um, on the red left side um, we, we, we write it in terms of rectangular or uh, rectangular it's rectangle okay or the other term is called Cartesian coordinate okay where the right side we express in terms of polar coordinate this is just to to revise your uh, mathematical basics right now you see um, the complex conjugate of um, uh, uh, a Cartesian coordinate right it is the uh, the change of the sign of imaginary part okay if we have a v1 is equal to a plus jb a complex conjugate of v1 is a minus jb whereas uh, in terms of polar coordinate right 
we use we want to use the property now you can see that the property of uh, complex numbers uh, it's, uh, the co property exists in Cartesian coordinate for uh, plus and minus or addition and subtraction whereby the two properties or multiplication and division exist in, in polar coordinate. In polar coordinate if you multiply two numbers, two complex numbers or phases if, if we use the terms in, 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 in electrical engineering we call phaser okay but mathematically it's it's known as a, it's known as a polar coordinate of, of an, a, a complex number in polar form okay if we multiply two polar forms we get uh, you know uh, multiplication of uh, of the magnitude and the angle just uh, the, 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 the the summation of the phase angle where the division would ex uh, would be de derived from the uh, the uh, division of the magnitude and the angle with the subtraction okay so these are the basics right so the magnitude of uh, of the uh, of the uh, complex phaser you can find it that from the uh, Pythagoras theorem square root of uh, real part square plus imaginary part square this is clear right and the phase angle knowing the um, uh, 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 numbers in in condition coordinate, right? The the phase angle can be de determined that from the uh, arc ten of imaginary part divided by real part, right? You 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 can still Im re recall this one, right? This is a, this is b. So when you write this in a complex plane, this is real axis and this is imaginary axis. This is a plus j b. When you uh, express this we have to get the conversion okay the conversion of the uh, uh, Cartesian po to polar form uh, in polar form you get you have to get the the, the absolute or um, if it is mathematics term we, we would call modulus okay the modulus of or the modulus is nothing but the the length of the vector uh, from the origin to to that point right this is a square plus b square and the uh, the uh, this is the, the this angle with respect to the real uh, axis. It is the phase angle or phi here, right? So now you you can see that uh, the ratio between b over a is is ten of phi, right? Right? You can see that b over a is ten of phi. So phi here is arc ten of b over a. B is what? B is the imaginary part, right? So if we put this as a Z, as an imaginary part, so that is an arctan of uh, imaginary part of Z divided by the real part of Z, right? This is the common notation that you, you should know it already, right? Um, this is the, the revision of uh, when we discuss about the uh, um, um, uh, circuit, right? Um, AC circuit. You learn it from already from 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 uh, electric circuit class. Okay. When we say the um, electrical property of uh, of uh, of uh, electrical system, we have both uh, inductance and capacitance. Now you see that uh, the the benefit of using um, phaser uh, analysis or the complex phaser is that you could uh, transform okay the uh, differential equation in time domain okay you have in the phaser domain okay uh, the property of reactor and capacitor okay these two are called energy storage right um, the energy storage of uh, in terms of the magnetic magnetic right uh, or uh, uh, magnetomotive force right for the magnetic field okay the property of you know magnetic field it's represented by by reactor where the electric field it's represented by capacitor okay so the property of uh, reactors and capacitor in time domains are expressed in terms of the uh, derivative function time derivative function okay if you put this into 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 your uh, circuit okay that would create uh, a differential equation 
normally we, we deal with the ordinary differential equation you learned it already right if you have a single uh, storage element okay if you have just one single storage element means you can you have you have either reactor or capacitor only one type in the in the, in the, in the circuit okay that is called that would generate okay uh, the, the the equation of the first type first order okay if you have a single type of uh, energy storage in 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 the circuit that is called first order uh, circuit okay if you have two types of the um, uh, storage elements to be present in in in, in a circuit that would generate the uh, second order differential equation okay and that you would you would have to think about you know uh, in which mode of the oscillation whether it is uh, critically dam under dam or over dam all right that's what you you learn it from from circuit so this is very important okay you have to take this uh, class pretty seriously because this is not an, an easy class i would say okay because it is uh, this class just a combination of all everything you learn from electric circuits from electromagnetics from uh, energy conversions or machine class uh, whatever you could call in your curriculum right so you ha uh, this class is particularly you know it's not that easy because uh, you have to apply those uh, fundamentals that you have it already in in this class right uh, so you have to take this seriously. If you can't follow uh, my explanation, that is that is understandable, okay. But if you don't, if you can't go along with my presentation, you have to stop and you have to rethink. Uh, what have you missed, right? If you can't uh, get any revision yourself, but first you have to, you know, you, know, you have to go back. And you have to check whether you understand this uh, the, this uh, circuit already or not, right? Uh, you have to practice it a lot, okay? If no, uh, if your own revision or if your own study doesn't help, you have to come to me, okay? You have to come to me, and you have to we have to discuss, okay? And I, I can teach you, okay, at any time, okay? You 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 better you you can you have to contact me, right? So. Once you transform this into phase domain, phase domain, you can see that this uh, ordinary differential equation can be transformed into an algebraic equation. By talking about algebraic equation means that um, you know the, the quantities are in plus or minus, okay, and there is no no more uh, 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 derivative part. Okay. Now. Uh, the quality that you have to know in this class is very important. Okay, uh, by having the phase, uh, by by converting the R, uh, L, and C to be in the uh, uh, to be in the phase domain, right? You have uh, uh, you know created a, a new terminology or the new term called impedance. Okay, impedance. Impedance is like an equivalence of resistance in the DC circuit. Okay, you remember? Well, impedance here, if you have, uh, 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 you know, uh, introduced the uh, L and C into, into, into the circuit, right? So you will have in phase domain, right? You would have R, R is a resistive part or a real part, right? Plus J times uh, imaginary part called X. Okay, the impedance is Z is equal to R plus JX. Okay, we have real part, we have imaginary part, right? The real part is called resistance. Just like in, in DC circuit, X here is called reactance. Okay, so all these two have the units in ohm and the Z is in ohm as well because uh, the relationship that explain uh, the uh, the circuit in in phase domain is an Ohm's law, right? V is equal to I times Z. Okay, that's why we we have this uh, the the benefit of the phase domain uh, phase domain, right? So when 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 I say impedance, okay, in this course impedance, uh, 
you have to think of this complex number, right? If it is a complex number, then it is called impedance, okay? But if I say reactance or the problems say reactance, reactance is just the imaginary part of uh, of the whole thing of the of the impedance, okay? If so please do not do like this, okay? Uh, if the problem says uh, reactance of 0.1 ohms, for example, you never and ever put J 0.1 ohm because this is just, you know, when pro problems say reactance means just reactive part, this is just X, all right? And uh, the reciprocal or the inverse of the Z, okay? Reciprocal of the Z, that is 1 over Z. 1 over Z is called Y. Alright, it's called Y. Okay, uh, re you remember V is equal to IR. And uh, if I want to, 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 to change uh, the side of the, uh, the, the equation, right? Now it, it means that, you know, uh, you, you know the I and you, you, you immediately you could compute the V, right? If I try to change VI is equal to V over R, Okay, uh, we can, can say that this is one over r times v, right? This what? How do we call this? Uh, you know, the one over r. Okay, r is resistance. Okay, resistance is the it's the capacity of the system to resist the flow of the current. Okay, so the opposite meanings of resistance is called conductance, right? One over r is the reciprocal or the inverse property of the resistance. It's called conductance. Okay, so now the conductance in, in, in English, this is a verbal expression, right? In uh, mathematics or in the symbol, symbolic expression, it's called, it's used G, right? G is conductance, all right? So the conductance uh, in DC circuit is called admittance in phase domain, okay? Admittance, because this is the property of admitting Admit means allow the current to flow, right? So this is the inverse property of impedance. So basically, if you know the English term, to impede is uh, is a syn is a synonym of uh, resist, right? Has the same meaning as resist. Okay. So what about the Y here? Y here would consist of two parts. That is the G. G is a conductance, right? Plus J V. All right, G here is called conductance as the same as the, the the DC part in this case, right? Because you see, this is the impedance, real part of impedance is also called resistance. So the G here is conductance, All right? And what about B? B here has a different name, so you have to remember, okay? Uh, B is called susceptance. Okay, B is called susceptance. So this is all these uh, names are important. Okay, so please do not skip these slides. All right, if you were to 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 get bored and trying to skip these slides, you 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 know, you uh, you will get this. Uh, you will you will regret afterwards. All right, I, I what this is what I can say. Right now you can see. Uh, the all the definitions. So we have talked about the uh, units of Z uh, and the same uh, the same units as R and X as well. So what about the unit of uh, admittance or the conductance, right? Um, you you can imagine you can can you remember what it's the units of the reciprocal of uh, resistance? Okay, this is in ohms. Ohm. Okay. Uh, the the old unit of conductance is called mole, right? Why is it mole? Because this is reciprocal or this is an inverse of ohm. Now you see, uh, ohms is OHM and uh, the the inverse units of ohms is mole because now we change the, you know, the position of O and H, right? You put H first and O after, okay? This is the, the original unit of uh, the conductance. Okay, that is that is that that sounds a little bit funny, but um, that that is the truth, right? 
Mo is a unit of uh, of um, um, inverse of of ohms. So that is reflected by by the way we we write the symbol as well. Okay, that's the way we symbolize this mo. The ohm is written like this. The mo is like this. Okay, this is the uh, this is the upside down ohms, right? That's upside down ohm, uh, ohm right? And uh, now, but this is an O unit, okay? You don't, if you go to see the textbook, you don't see the terms moles anymore. So the people have used this, uh, try to standardize this, uh, the, 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 the unit of conductance. So the, 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 um, the new unit is called Siemens. Okay, this is S, okay? Siemens, okay? So all these are uh, expressed in terms of Siemens S, S, and the unit of Y is also S, right? I think it's clear, right? And you have learned it already that the XL is omega L and the XC is uh, one, it's a negative omega Z, right? Um, here, you can see that we have the property of uh, of the transformation between uh, the time angle and the phase uh, between the time domain and the phase domain, right? The property of the uh, resistance is that the voltage and the currents are in phase to each other, and the uh, the inductance for inductance, right? Mm. Uh, the inductance, the current just lack the voltage, okay? To say the the lacking power factor, you 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 can see that the uh, uh, this is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, V is here and the I just lack the V by 90 degree because the rotation, uh, the rest rotation of this, this phaser is on the, uh, the positive direction is counterclockwise, right? So if you stand up at this uh, 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 reference position, you see the V first and the I afterwards. Or if you see from the time domain, right? If you put the V as a, a reference, now you see that the V uh, is at the maximum at this uh, time at zero, and the I just go to the maximum at some later time, okay? At, at a later time. So the I just lack the V by this angle, okay? And the lacking is due to, you know, the, uh, you know, the transformation from this property of the integration right and the property of uh, the capacitance is that is that the current just lead the v uh, if you see from the time domain right from the time domain you can see that the um, uh, the angle i mean if you see maximum for example right um, the maximum of of v is just a maximum of i if you extend this a little bit okay now you can see that uh, the maximum of I just happened before the the maximum of V, okay? Or you could do in different ways. You can see at uh, uh, when uh, uh, which which uh, waveform goes to zero first, okay? Or you can see that which forms goes to the to the maximum first. That's why we that's how we 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 justify which uh, waveform it's leading or the la lacking with another form. Right. This is to see from. This is the way how we see uh, which one is lacking, which one is leading in time domain. What about in in phase domain, in phase domain, right? If we stand at the reference, okay, uh, which one is entering the goal first? If we call, if we rotate in the positive direction, okay. You can see that the I just enter the goal first because otherwise uh, it cannot go when the V is zero, it cannot go up to this 90 degree. Okay, so the I just enter the goals first uh, before the V. So we can say that the current just uh, lead the, the voltage. Okay, and this is this uh, three uh, the current, I mean the, the equation that describe the um, uh, the relationship between the voltage and the current. Okay. So this example, I have done another video clip in in a, in the great detail. I would suggest you to 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 go through this uh, 
uh, uh, in greater detail, all right? Um, 